Beer. Chilled, frothy beer. The one thing guaranteed to make people and Sunday afternoons more interesting. This week, WAC and Epify tell you how beer became the third most popular drink in the world, after water and tea, and how India's appetite for the bitter stuff is growing. Beer is made by first boiling wheat or barley in water. This produces a sugary syrup called as wort. The wort is then fermented by live yeast to form beer. Of course, we just skipped a lot of little steps in the middle, which actually gives the beer its flavor. Brewing beer is a job of extreme skill, almost as much as making awesome sketches for YouTube videos. Maybe that's why the first beer was brewed in monasteries, because you needed the patience of a monk to make this thing. Quite a few archaeologists also believe that beer was key to civilization. The invention of beer and bread helped farmers earn more than what they needed from their produce, which is what civilization is all about, really. Though the oldest brewery in the world in Bavaria is some 1,300 years old, beer brewing remained a work-from-home kind of business till the 1800s. The fun was over with the Industrial Revolution. Now, there were factories that were making gallons of standard beer for millions of beer drinkers. Modern beer came to be of two kinds mostly, lager and ale. Lager was beer which was fermented at cool temperatures, while ale fermented at higher temperatures. A large part of the beer's flavour also comes from the local water supply. The hard water in Ireland makes Guinness taste the way it does, while the gypsum in English water gives their ale that special flavour. The northernmost brewery in Ilulissat, Greenland, actually makes its beer from glacial water. Now, how cool is that? Mass-produced beer was also put to different uses, other than drinking and making merry. Beer has also become a shampoo ingredient because of the proteins in it, which repair damaged hair. The world's most famous beef, the Kobe beef from Japan, is apparently produced by feeding the cows beer regularly. The farmers believe that this makes the meat more tender and succulent. Industrialization also made beer bitter. Brewers started adding hop as a preservative to help them make their bulk-produced beer last the long travels. And it's the hop which gives the modern beer its bitter flavor. In fact, the beer brought to India by the British was called as the India Pale Ale with its signature high hops content to keep it fresh during the long voyage. But none of that mattered when an Englishman, Edward Dyer, opened India's first liquor brewery in Kasoli in 1830. The Dyer Brewery over time turned to the Mohan Meakin Brewery, whose famous product today is known as Old Monk Rum. Not that we needed beer making lessons from the British. In India, groups of people have been brewing beer for ages. Ethnic tribes, for example, are making beer out of rice, which is called as handia. In fact, beer had such ceremonial and medicinal value for these tribes that alcoholism started to become an issue. That's why the government banned the sale of liquor to tribesmen in places like Meghalaya and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. In the rest of India, as consumption grew, so did some iconic brands like Kingfisher, Kalyani Black Label, Haywards, London Pilsner and Lion. At $7 billion, the beer market in India is one of the biggest. But an average adult in India consumes only like 1.6 litres of beer a year. Now compare that with 106.1 litres for an average German or 77.1 litres for an average American. We clearly have some catching up to do. Some of the slack is being picked up by these cool new microbreweries. These are tiny independent breweries which basically produce their own custom beer and sell it exclusively through an attached pub or bar. Even though only a handful of cities allow them, microbreweries have bloomed in India. Bangalore is widely regarded as the beer capital of India for the sheer range of its microbreweries. But even then, unfriendly laws like requirement of a minimum 10,000 square feet of space and expensive licenses are proving to be major stumbling blocks. There are also rules forbidding the production of alcohol in residential and educational areas. We're a young country though, and the demand for beer is growing. It's only time before the law and the supply can catch up with our thirst for a good time. That's it this week from us at WAC and Epify. Comment, share and subscribe to our channel. And let's raise a toast to the beers that we love the most. I've pretty much travelled to like every continent in the world. Yeah, check that out. 
and uh, the last two places that are on my wish list is Russia and the Antarctica. There are many international dimensions for the cause and solutions. Hence, working for solution is a collective responsibility of a global community.